It's the way the British establishment recognises people who have made an outstanding contribution to public life. Thousands of brilliant public servants, cultural icons and sporting titans have filed into Buckingham Palace to receive a well-deserved honour. How they're chosen is a matter of the utmost secrecy. The Cabinet insists the system is fair and based on merit. But tonight, current and former members of some of the ten committees which make the decision have told this programme they believe the process is open to abuse. They didn't even meet the basic criteria for that committee and the only reason why I could see was because of their political links. He said, you know, if you uh, continue uh, the opposition, some things might happen that you don't like. There might be some consequences. Politics and patronage has been a toxic mix for centuries. David Lloyd George's Liberal Party was accused of selling peerages. A cash for honours scandal also embroiled Tony Blair. Now the system is under scrutiny again. In unprecedented interviews, serving and former members of the Honours Committees have told us how they came under pressure from successive Conservative governments to honour Tory supporters or donors. And after they stood up to number 10, they were told their services were no longer required. Take a seat. Okay, thank you. Sir Vernon Ellis was the chair of the Arts and Media Honours Committee during David Cameron's right. premiership. The former head of the British right. Council, he's decided to speak out for the first time about how he stood up to number 10 and ended up paying the price. The whole process of honours, you really want to try and pluck out the unsung heroes and there are so many thousands of them. But one incident stands out in 2015 when number 10 twice pushed a party donor for an honour. Sir Vernon pushed back. Well, I felt that if he'd been given the honour, it would bring the honours into a bit of disrepute because people would say, how can he possibly deserve this honour when in this other field uh, there was so much kind of going on and, and uh, uh, a noise and uh, some of that was at his door, right or wrong. And this was a Tory donor? He was also a Tory donor. And um, do you think that's why Number 10 were pushing him? I don't know. I, 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 <laughs> you may infer that, but I really don't know. But Sir Vernon's objections resonated down Whitehall. He says the Cabinet Secretary, the late Jeremy Hayward, a man he hugely respected then and now, gave him a well-meant warning. He said, you know, if you uh, continue uh, the opposition, some things might happen that you don't like. There might be some consequences. And I said, really, what? what sort of consequences? He didn't say, he said, so. he said, sometimes, you know, you just got to be pragmatic. I just felt in this particular area, you shouldn't do that. You should stick for what's right and not, otherwise it's a slippery slope. The committee successfully blocked the donor in question. But in 2015, Sir Vernon was told he wouldn't be given another term as chairman, um, a highly unusual move. And my committee was outraged um, because they saw for what it was, it just because I'd taken the stance, um, wasn't being renewed. And next time I saw Jeremy Hayward, I said, so now I know what you mean by consequences. What did he say? He just smiled. I mean, you know, what can he say? I don't know what the process was, but that was the consequence. And it was quite obvious that was the consequence. Well, well you say it's quite obvious. I mean, you, there's no evidence to suggest. Not at all. Not at all. But your strong hunch is that you were basically punished for being awkward and standing up to number 10 over... Their oh, I, I don't think there's any question about it. You know, it's, it's not the end of the world for me. I had a bit more time than I hadn't expected, and I was very busy at the time, so I wasn't going to um, uh, cry too much over it. Lord Haywood's widow, Suzanne, said the allegations were baseless. She said her husband had dedicated his life to public service. We've spoken to four other current and former members of the Honours Committees. They've told us that, like Sir Vernon, they resisted pressure to approve honours for party supporters. One committee chair has, in recent weeks, complained to the Cabinet Office in no uncertain terms. That was Dame Louise Casey, chair of the Community and Voluntary Service Committee, which hands out the lion's share of honours. Earlier this month, she wrote a damning email seen by this programme, voicing her concerns. It's no secret I've struggled with the politicalisation of the honours and especially with the last incumbents of number 10. I know balancing a demanding number 10 with many other pressures is hard, but I also owe it to myself to say when I think something is not right. 
One of her colleagues on the Community and Voluntary Service Committee, Wahid Salim, a former Labour Deputy Police and Crime Commissioner, also felt something wasn't right. Well, did you feel under any pressure from Number 10 when you were in the room considering these nominations? So there were subtle pressure, if I want to put it that way, um, to ensure that these nominations were pushed through. So there was somebody from Number 10 who sits on the committee, who obviously reports back to Number 10, and they, these nominations, when they were rejected by the committee, were continuously put back to the committee until the right answer came along. We actually did uh, push back, but it was very interesting how those names were continuously being put forward until the right answer was given. And that's the politicalisation and the political influence uh, that had occurred um, in the committee. So how long after you and other members of the committee pushed back on, on these honours did you find out that your three-year term was not going to be renewed? So it was a matter of a uh, month after that I was informed by um, an individual in number 10. There was no real reason given as to why my term of office wasn't going to be renewed, whereas um, there was two other people that were uh, appointed at the same time as me. Their uh, term of office was renewed. My term of office wasn't. So, in effect, do you think you were being punished for standing up to number 10? I think there's a perception that um, if you uh, don't hold the line, then you're no longer required. In her email to the Cabinet Office, Dame Louise complained about the treatment of Mr Salim and two other committee members who had raised objections to the government's chosen candidates. After a series of sleaze scandals in recent years, the new Prime Minister has promised to uphold the highest standards in public life. This government will have integrity, professionalism and accountability at every level. Tonight, the Cabinet Office told us... The process for selecting honours is based on merit and approved by committees which are made up of independent members. Political awards are a tiny number compared to the overall amount of honours granted. Members are appointed for three-year terms and terms can be extended by mutual consent. Several committee members we contacted defended the system and said they hadn't personally witnessed undue political pressure. That system is currently under review and there are calls for reform. If this is the only way of rewarding them, perhaps we need a special category for kind of political services, which is clear and transparent. A source said the Cabinet Office was determined to make the King's first New Year honours list, published within days, as vanilla as possible. That's not a word being applied to Boris Johnson's controversial resignation honours list, also due soon. Is modern political probity once again colliding with an ancient system open to abuse?